Okay, so uh, what was I just thinking about there? Eh? Now, for those of you who don't know, my name is Adam. It's not a great name, but it's it's a name you believe. I could have come out here and said, hey, my name's Asshole, what's up? And, you know, it might be funny, but you're not going to believe that Asshole's my real name. I could come out here and say, hey, I'm a son of a bitch. And you might say, dude, we know. And, you know, <laughs> we could tell it just by looking at you. But you're not going to believe it's my real name. But with Adam, well, tonight that's who you'll be dealing with is, is Adam. And at least you might be able to believe that. Eh, where do I come from? Man, I come from a lot of hood. I come from a lot of pain, work, and a whole lot of misfortune. But I also come from a lot of love. And when I approach the world, that's what I try to approach it with. But, uh, maybe that's not as important as I like to think it is. Now, let's get the unnecessary qualifications out of the way first. Um, I like to think of my mind as a busy and complex place, but, uh, I could be wrong. Look, I get a lot of thoughts, and sometimes those thoughts seem like good ones that I should hold on to for a while. Maybe build off of, and, you know, document in detail, and, well, then another thought comes along, and I completely forget, uh, well, everything. I mean, there's gotta be normal, right? I feel like I'm away from home a lot. Which is uh, slightly amazing to me, since, well, I usually insist on relieving myself at home only. I don't think I'm a freak just yet, though, because I do have my reasons. Okay. I admit it. I haven't been in a woman's restroom for a long, long time. And maybe I didn't need to admit that. Likewise, uh, I'm sure most of you ladies haven't been in a men's restroom for a while either. Because if you have, well... You've probably got some more stories more interesting than my own to tell up here. But, uh, gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that every one of you will know what I'm talking about when I say that a men's public restroom is a truly disgusting place to be. Look, you go in there and there's pee on the floor, the walls, crap in the toilet seat, and complete lack of toilet paper. And to top it off, a lot of times there's not even any soap to wash your sticking hands with when you're done. It's a nasty place to be. And if, like me, you're a nervous peer, you know the public restroom is one of the most uncomfortable places in the entire world to hang out in. Not that men hang out in the restroom, of course, no. We just go in there to do our business and leave. There's no discussion, no lingering. It's in, it's out, it's done. It's like sex, but without the satisfaction when we're finished. Why else wouldn't I like the men's bathroom, huh? Men, think about what happens when you go in there. If you aim for the stand-up toilet, then you go in, you take your junk out and stand at the ready. But if it's a busy place, then almost invariably, some other dude is going to come in, saddle up to the stall next to yours, take his own junk out, and in the process of doing so, casually look over to see what you're packing like in some sort of pervoida competition. And you're left standing there. Probably uncomfortable. Thinking about that competition, maybe you're remembering how peeing for discs and accuracy used to be a sport back in grade school. Except that you're not in grade school anymore and some random dude checking you out, while, well, still in the interest of size, is not anywhere near being about distance or accuracy. So, you know, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> but uh, unlike the women's restroom, the men's bathroom offers more than just one type of toilet, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. We may not spend hours in the bathroom for makeup, but girls, at least we have options. And that option is a fantastic thing for nervous peers, again, uh, like myself. Except that uh, even being blockaded in a tiny little room facing nothing but a toilet still isn't enough comfort to one who has noise or nothing. No, we go in there, and the slightest noise at all, like a door opening in the distance, the sink coming on, some dude in the stall next to us releasing sounds of the devil himself as they try to push their past guilt out of their system. It's all noise! And that noise makes us timid. And that timidity spells trouble for the sit-down toilet indeed. Every time you go in there, you can see proof of the nervous peer left behind. Clues left to uncover the mystery of the type of dude who was in there previously, though they may now be long gone. And those little noises build up. But they build up in a way that ends up stopping up the works. Instead of a steady stream, it will become a trickle. 
for those of us with the most sensitive knives, that trickle might still be a stream, but that stream is suddenly spraying all over the place. Up, down, side to side, it's out of control! And that out of control mess just gets everywhere in that sit down stall. Because some nervous peer had to be a hero and try to stand up like a man, rather than sit in the drippings and droppings left behind by other people just like himself. That's a truly disgusting sight, and it's never any fun to face. <sighs> but when you have to release, it's something you have to face. And while facing in the public is bad enough, people, there's no worse place to face such a sight than at work. Because at work, not only is the possibility of plotting yourself blastingly in a puddle of pee more likely due to co-workers being in a hurry to get back on the clock, it's also the place where it's going to be noticed. Put yourself in the bathroom at work. As a woman, you could be doing anything in the stall. But if you're a male, well... We see feet on the floor behind the wall in the stall, and what you're probably doing is a number we can easily call. That number is two, and the stories of you having to do it are going to follow you. As soon as you leave that stall to go back out into the workplace, you'll see the gazes, you'll see the shaking heads. People looking at their watch in disapproval and obvious confirmation of what they know you are up to in there. It's easier just to hold it and wait until you get home. If you can't make it home, then stop at your nearest fast food place because they know that food makes people sick. And you know that you owe the workers behind the counter nothing. But still, it's uncomfortable. I get it. I might be in pain. I might have a purple face as I hold my breath in, not daring to let it loose in case loosening that up loosens something else up too. <laughs> no, I'll wait. I might be a scary dude to work for the last half of the day, but hey. There's a reason I'm often a few minutes late to my desk, and at least I flush that reason down the tubes at home. Do I have to go now? No. But I still look grumpy. I still look pissed. Well, yeah. It's my demeanor, right? So it happens to be my problem today. I got a problem. I've got a lot of problems. One of them is admitting to the problems I've got. Love. Love is a problem. Not, uh, not, of course, love towards me. No, never that. No, that's a welcome thing. Now, the problem is the love I've got for others. And, well, it's a problem every day. Everywhere I've gone in my life. As a kid. As a delinquent. As a teenager. And as an adult. Well, I've been screwed over by the same damn thing. Love. Love fucks me over every time. For some people, their failing is money. Some people have problems with addiction. Some people have problems with being an asshole, but uh, not me. I hope. <laughs> no, my problem every damn time is love. Why is it a problem? Well, it's, look, it's something that coming from me. It's just, it just never accepted happily. And I get it. I see myself in the morning, after the shower, making myself up. I know how I look to other people. And that's the time of day when I'm rested and showered and looking fresh. Look, I don't look any better for the rest of the day than I do when I'm getting ready for work in the morning. Now, if I were tried, uh, I could seriously count on, like, yeah, with one hand the amount of times I've fallen for somebody and then that love accepted positively with a smile and an eagerness that would lead to something good. Uh, it's easy to do with one hand. Heck. I could do it with just one finger, because the number of times is zero, and I can't be alone in that. It makes it easy, right? Maybe I just don't know what it takes to have what it takes to interest someone. I've got my game. I've got my game. I wish it was a game other people would like to play with me, but, uh, you know, so far it's like the single-player version, and frankly, well, it's beginning to chafe. And my hands are dry, okay? <laughs> my game? I'd like to keep it a secret, but uh, in the interest of comedy, I'll tell you about my game. Because when I think about it, it's, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if I should be too happy to realize that it even makes me laugh. But uh, if nothing else, describing it might count as a bit of advertising, and the girls might decide it doesn't sound so bad, right? <laughs> Maybe they want to get involved. Uh, probably not, but maybe, you know. So, 
I go out there with a goal in mind. Serious. Ready. Good to go. Not because I'm serious, there's a, there's a frown on my face to show people I'm not happy. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Yeah, you know, it's part of the game. Everyone sees that I'm unhappy. And maybe those women whom I might pay attention to, you know, treat nice, warmly, kindly. Maybe one of them might get it in their minds that, hey, I'm sad. <laughs> and that maybe they could be the ones to make me happy. Yeah, nothing. And that goes right over their heads. It's not like you can say anything about it because you know, that's just pushing the reality of the situation in their face. And if you have to do that, well, uh, you've lost the game already, buddy. No, this is your game, and persistence, no matter how annoying, is how to play. The grumpiness has to be something they notice on their own. And you have to let them come up with the idea that they might be able to be the ones to make the difference. Persistence. Being kind. Is the play. Oh, I get nothing of it done, and then I go home and wonder why. What? Being grumpy doesn't attract? Hell no! <laughs> nothing! You're gonna tell me that, you know, glaring at someone from across the room doesn't attract the attention you want? No, of course not. They're not even gonna know, most likely. You're suggesting that it's slightly between the ranges of being overweight and plain fat, that there's no suggestion of a good time? I mean, it's obvious I like to eat. There's no way she's gonna starve. <laughs> Are you seriously trying to tell me that when you suddenly go silent and introspective around someone you used to be able to talk to so freely about everything, it doesn't arouse suspicion that something just might be up? Eh, that one I'm still toying with, because uh, when I do that, there's something up, but when someone does that to me in return, I think it's born of pure and sudden hatred against me. <laughs> you know? Obvious. You know? Why would they stop talking? Well, they just don't like me. That's, that's gotta be it. Why am I not talking to them? It's, well, it's because I like them. It, it's hard to explain. I guess you had to be there. Look, I'm listening to myself talking about this type of behavior and saying out loud, you don't want anything to do with that guy. He's creepy. I'm standing here listening to this and can't believe that, yeah, I'm not only describing that guy, I've become that guy. It's scary. So, uh... I'm obviously a nervous sort. Nice to meet you. Lots of people are from every walk of life, of course, but I'm talking about myself here, you know, because that's what I do best. <laughs> people have uh, different ways of calming their nerves in a public setting. You know, some people have stress balls, and my balls are like so stressed that they're more than blue, they're practically purple. Some people twiddle their thumbs, and even though I've never seen that, I do understand that it was a popular thing to do back in the day. Some people have their soybean animals that are used to calm them down. Now that's a more recent development that I like to think I might have had a hand in starting myself since my good kitty tiger has been known to accompany me in public for almost 15 years now. Some people uh, play with their keys because they're bored as fuck. Or girls like to play with their hair because their hair is beautiful and even they can't keep their hands off it. Some guys go out there and adjust themselves in a moment of discomfort like... a lot. I mean, crap. Sometimes they linger and you swear they're doing a whole lot more than just adjusting. Me? Well... Yeah, I got my kid. But I don't always have him. No, when I get uncomfortable, I usually go straight for the cards. Shuffling a deck is like shuffling away a problem. Cutting a deck and it's like cutting a, to a different part of the day. Or a different thought process that might be in a better standing. But the card work too, you know, that's, that's part of the game I play. It's not an effective part of the game, from what I understand, but it's a staple that I've stuck to throughout my pitiful adult existence thanks to a certain film called uh, Being John Malkovic. Now, if you remember that film, it's a, um, you know, go for it. If you haven't seen it, don't. It's horrible. But uh, in the film, we found uh, John Cusack turning some poor secretary on with his filing skills in the office. I'll go out there with a deck of cards, shuffling, cutting, spreading the deck, fanning the deck, showing my finger dexterity to maybe turn the girls on. I mean, look, it's like a preview. You can see I can handle this well. Just think of how I can handle you. <laughs> and believe it or not, this part of the game has worked with a few people, and they have some magical stories to tell. Most of the time, though, uh, nothing. <laughs> Most of the time, a woman sees the cards, sees a manipulation, and just replies with, 
Oh, you must be a nerd. Bye. And I'm left understanding just how much skill it takes to be completely disregarded in this world. But there's more. There's always more. This week I went out to meet my parents at a place called Shares Restaurant for some dinner. It's, uh, you know, it's nice to catch up, and my parents kind of demand an update to their kids' lives every few days, and it's good that the kids get an update to theirs. So I go in, and we get this waitress who is, uh... I don't know what's wrong with her, but she's really, really into my voice. At some point in the meal, she comes back to check on the table and announces that, hey, it's a birthday. Like we care. We just met the girl, and she's demanding we sing to her, like she's the one who personally cooked our food or something. I mean, usually a birthday song at a restaurant goes the other way. But anything new is good, so, uh, why not? So the family sings to her, and she gets all sad, you know, because we sang to her. <laughs> but, you know, we're horrible now. But uh, she gets all sad because I barely put my two cents into the song. Turns out she'd wanted me to sing to her. Now, voices are part of the game, after all. No, I've got one that has received some attention before. So I'm sitting there, and she's slightly sad, moping around. I look up a bit and say to her, Be careful what you wish for, girl. You might just get it. And she brightens up. Now, my parents are looking at me like they think I'm on Jupiter or something, and I bust out with the, It's time for food! And that girl is gone. It's like someone turned on the ignition to a car without the emergency brake engaged. So I guess that part works. I mean, it is part of the game, like I said. Now I'm okay with voices. So sometimes I'll throw a different voice in on top of everything else. I know how to talk. Kinda. And with a different voice, it's, it's like a mask you can hide behind, right? Well, sure. But let's get down to the honesty here. If this edition ever worked, have I ever been entirely prepared to walk through the rest of my life with whatever voice was the hook to a long-term relationship? Hell no! There will never ever be a time when I'm comfortable enough to go up to a girl and say something like, Hey girl, do you want to get a tiny boot or maybe we go to the movies? No! No, of course not! Look, at the end of the day, no matter what trappings I put on, you know, some scent besides the smell of B.O. and guilt that I come prepackaged with, some sort of clothing style that isn't somewhere between the realms of, you know, my mother never teaching me how to dress and straight up tourist, the gods, the cat, a different speaking style, the frown, the grump, the glare, or, you know, complete look of embarrassment and shame that just comes naturally, well, <laughs> I've got to try to be happy with myself. <laughs> but I'm not. But I'm not. And if I'm not happy with myself, how can I expect anyone else to be happy with me? It's just not happening. Hey, did you ever wake up in the morning expecting to talk about your own difficulties going to the bathroom in public all day, but, uh, you know, have it turn around to something else equally embarrassing? Did you ever spend your time wondering what you could do exactly to make an impact? I don't know. I mean, it's like I do. But at the same time, I don't. Look, I'll admit it. Lately, there has been an issue on my mind. And it's made it very difficult to talk to anyone at all. Yeah, I've been quiet lately. Not that you know, since nobody listening to this really knows me, but... Yeah. It's, it's like that silent part of my game, right? Not directed towards any one poison this time, so much as it is recently directed towards just about everyone, everywhere. And it's a problem. Also, like, uh, the game. Well, the different voice comes into play. When I'm nervous. Because that's all you've been hearing this whole time. It's just a different voice than my own. It doesn't even take that big of a change to make a different character. But uh, keeping that character consistent, though, can be... work. It's uh, the chance to play a different part, though. A part that... might have a game better than your own.
A part that might seem more successful or more likable than what you consider yourself to be. It's all part of the game. And as history has shown, the game is all part of the problem. And part of this. Sitting here at Chateau Fred Mayer, contemplating for a bit, and dealing with Adam. <laughs>